In today's video, we're going to be talking about pyroluria, which can be the hidden cause of your mental health symptoms, in particular anxiety and mood imbalances. So if you're interested in this topic, stay tuned. Pyroluria, also known as pyral disorder or MAV factor is a genetic condition where the person is excreting cryptopyrals or hydroxyhemopylorin 2-1 or HPLs in the urine. And these cryptopyrals or pyrals or HPLs, whatever you want to call them, actually bind to essential nutrients and in particular zinc and B6. So why does this matter? So depletion of these nutrients can actually lead to deficiencies in our neurotransmitters, in particular norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, and even GABA. This can affect brain function, create mood imbalances, increase risk of agitation and irritability, and also affect stress tolerance. So what is pyroluria? Well, pyroluria is often linked to ADHD, chronic anxiety, bipolar disorder, and even schizophrenia. It's considered a metabolic disorder in functional psychiatry. However, mainstream psychiatry does not recognize pyroluria, and it's also not widely recognized in conventional medicine. And the role of pyrroles in mental health was first discovered in 1961 by Canadian psychiatrist Abraham Hoffer. He detected these unknown substances in the urine of most of his schizophrenic patients with active symptoms and also noted that these substances disappeared when the symptoms were not active or the symptoms were in remission. And the term mauve factor was coined after the lilac colored spots were produced during chromatographic urine testing. And so what are the symptoms of pyroluria? Well, there are a vast number of symptoms that get attributed to pyroluria, but we're gonna focus on the main ones and the ones that I see most commonly. So starting with mood and emotional symptoms, chronic anxiety and inner tension, mood swings and depression, low stress tolerance and being easily overwhelmed, social withdrawal or feeling uncomfortable in social situations, irritability, quick temper, emotional outburst, episodic anger, poor short-term memory, and nervousness. Cognitive symptoms include things like brain fog, difficulty concentrating, poor memory, and trouble finding words. Physical symptoms are things like pale skin or poor tanning ability, poor wound healing, frequent infections, joint pain, light sensitivity, poor dream recall or lack of dreams, and white spots on the nails. And so what causes pyroluria? Well, we already discussed that it's from a genetic disorder. So there is a genetic predisposition and it is known that pyroluria runs in families. It is also induced by chronic stress and trauma because high stress can actually increase the HPL production in the urine, which will worsen a person's symptoms. Poor diet and malabsorption is another risk factor or cause because gut health issues can actually prevent absorption of these key nutrients and lead to malabsorption of zinc and B6 along with other essential nutrients. And as I mentioned before, conditions that are often linked to pyroluria are ADHD, autism spectrum disorders, schizophrenia, depression, and even alcoholism. So how is pyroluria diagnosed? Well, it's diagnosed through a urine test that detects the cryptopyrroles or the hydroxyhemopylorin 2-1 or HPLs in the urine. And you'll see here that optimal cryptopyral levels are going to be 0 to 11 micrograms per deciliter. 11 to 15 micrograms per deciliter are considered borderline. And greater than 16 is considered having pyroluria. Now, the laboratory DHA labs um, is the only laboratory that accounts for the specific gravity of the urine and calculates the cryptopyral count or the HPL count based off of the specific gravity. So it's the most accurate test around. I am not sponsored by DHA labs, but just letting you know that is the most accurate test to get if you're going to be testing for cryptopyrals. And so some important things to consider when it comes to testing for cryptopyrals is that cryptopyral levels will fluctuate during periods of stress. And therefore it is advised to take this test during a stressful period or a time where you're having the most symptoms because that will be the most accurate result of the test. It can also be used to monitor a response to treatment. 
meaning after three or six months of treatment, we can retest your cryptopyral levels and see if the treatment is actually working. And so what are the key nutrients for pyroluria? Well, if you guessed it, if you're depleting B6 and zinc, then you want to replete B6 and zinc. So the key nutrient zinc, you can use zinc picolinate or zinc gluconate um, as your primary sources of zinc. There are other uh, zinc forms around, which I mentioned in the video on zinc. So if you missed it, check it out. But when we're treating pyroluria, the dosage range is going to be anywhere from 25 to 100 milligrams daily. And that is in divided doses. So taking it twice a day. And repleting with zinc is gonna be crucial for neurotransmitter function and also to help support immune function and reduce oxidative stress. And then you have your vitamin B6, which can be taken as pyridoxine HCL or P5P. And many practitioners will combine both the pyridoxine HCL and P5P or pyridoxal 5-phosphate, which is considered the active form of B6, They'll combine those two together for better absorption. And the dosage range is gonna be anywhere from 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams of vitamin B6, again, in divided doses with the zinc. And vitamin B6 is key because it's essential for serotonin and dopamine production and helping with that neurotransmitter balance. Now, some other key nutrients that are important are gonna be magnesium. Magnesium and B6 work synergistically together. And there are other studies that show magnesium and zinc can also help support the nervous system and work synergistically together as well to support mental health. Magnesium also helps to support a relaxation response as well as helps with the stress response or the HPA access. Now I did a video on magnesium. If you missed it, be sure to check it out. And then we have our omega-3s and omega-6 fatty acids because we want to reduce inflammation, which can be caused due to chronic stress exposure and poor stress tolerance. However, omega-3 fatty acids may not be tolerated well, and many people with high levels of cryptopyrols or pyroluria will actually have adverse effects to omega-3s and will do better with omega-6s. So with omega-6s, you can use something like primrose oil, which will help support prostaglandin PGE1 production, which is anti-inflammatory, but also known to help support brain health and mood. Now, if someone with pyroluria is low in omega-3s, because I also like to do the omega-3 check, I will support them with their omega-3s that their body shows they need, but will do so cautiously monitoring for symptoms of adverse effects or increase in maybe agitation or anxiety. Those who need omega-3 supplementation will actually find relief and benefit from using omega-3. So we have to use omega-3s um, with caution, but also use omega-3s if we find deficiencies in omega-3s. Vitamin C can also be a good adjunct to use in those with pyroluria because this will further support the immune system as well as reduce oxidative stress and also support nutrient absorption. The other B vitamins are also very important, like thiamine, riboflavin, biotin, B12, etc. All these B vitamins work synergistically together to help support overall brain function, nervous system function, as well as helps to support metabolism and breaking down glucose and supporting oxidative stress and something called methylation, which is the first phase of detoxification. So using B6 along with other B vitamins as a supportive role is often used for the treatment in those with pyroluria. And GABA support can also be used to target those anxiety symptoms so supplements like L-theanine and taurine can also be used as adjuncts to the B6 and zinc protocols. So now let's talk about those dosages and supplementation guidelines with B6 and zinc. Now we talked about using vitamin B6 in dosages up to 200 milligrams. However, there are reports of people needing higher dosages than that. In the general population, it is not advised to take vitamin B6 in dosages greater than 100 milligrams per day because you could actually cause uh, neurotoxicity or neuro damage from too much vitamin B6. And so therefore it's important if you are someone who thinks that you require higher dosages of B6 to treat the pyroluria, you must do so under the direction of your provider. It's also important to note that those with mild cases of pyroluria, those in the borderline range are actually gonna see symptom improvement rather quickly, usually within a month of treatment. 
and those with more severe forms of pyroluria and higher cryptopyrrole production are going to take longer, anywhere from three to six months, and some patients even taking 12 months to see improvement. So if you are positive for pyrroles and you're in that severe category and you're not seeing symptom improvement yet, just hang in there. It does take some time. Also note that temporary stress dosing may be necessary, meaning if you're on a regimen that's treating your symptoms and reducing your mental health symptoms of anxiety and agitation or irritability, during times of stress, you may notice that your symptoms start to reemerge. And this could be uh, times of emotional stress or even illness. So during those times, you would want to increase your dose of B6 and zinc, of course, under the direction of your provider. It's also important to note that if a person has mold toxicity or exposure to heavy metals, that we slowly titrate the dosages of B6 and zinc very cautiously because as we're increasing these nutrients, we're actually improving detoxification. And if you're improving detoxification and you have a lot of toxin buildup in your system, you can actually overwhelm it with too much toxins and cause a reaction. So therefore, slow titration is very important. And overall, it's just good to slowly titrate your dosages of any supplements for that matter, just to make sure you can assess for any adverse effects. And another thing to note when it comes to supplementing with zinc and B6 for pyroluria is that if you stop supplementing within two to four weeks, symptoms will often re-emerge. So those with pyrrole disorder, especially those with severe pyrrole disorder, will need B6 and zinc treatment as a lifelong treatment to support their mental health symptoms. And so now let's talk about dietary and lifestyle factors. Well, first and foremost, let's talk about diet. And with diet, we need to eliminate processed foods and high refined sugars because they induce inflammation. We also want to increase our anti-inflammatory foods. Use whole foods in the diet, fruits and vegetables, organic foods, increase your omega-3 intake, get those from foods and also support gut health. So look for things that help to increase microbiome diversity, like probiotics, things like yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, kimchi, etc. You also want to make sure that you are reducing your stress and practicing good stress management techniques, as well as supporting your sleep. Because if you're not sleeping well, you're gonna increase your stress response and increase your propensity for mood symptoms like anxiety, irritability, agitation, and even depression. So making sure you have a good stress management routine, whether it's meditation, mindfulness, deep breathing, vagus massage, et cetera, have something in your day that you do to help reduce your stress. And also at night, a nighttime routine that uses sleep hygiene practices, which I talk about in my video on blue light blocking glasses. If you missed that, go ahead and check it out. Another way to help reduce your stress load is to avoid overstimulation. So avoid crowds, loud noises, and stressful environments, which can oftentimes exacerbate your symptoms. So who might benefit from pyroluria treatment? Well, individuals with chronic anxiety, depression, and emotional instability will oftentimes benefit. And obviously you wanna get tested. So these are the people that should get tested first and foremost. Those with the family history of mood disorders or substance abuse disorders or neurodevelopmental conditions should also consider testing and treatment for pyroluria. Those with unexplained nutrient deficiencies, even if you're eating a healthy diet. So if you do labs for nutrients and you're noticing you have a lot of nutrient deficiencies, that is a warning sign that you may have pyroluria. So get tested for that. Also, if you're someone who struggles with your treatment for mental health, so if you went to a psychiatrist early on in your age because you had these symptoms of anxiety or mood instability, you got put on medications, and you're heading down the path of treatment resistance because nothing seems to be working, it's a high likelihood that you have something like pyroluria or other issues with nutrient deficiencies that you should look into. Now, in summary, there is some controversy with pyroluria. It's not widely recognized in mainstream psychiatry, and more research is needed to validate the testing methodologies and treatment protocols. However, functional and integrative medicine practitioners in psychiatry have observed positive patient results using the treatment protocols that I discussed in this video. And so when we look at the integrative psychiatry perspective, we tend to emphasize, which I often do, the skills before pills approach. 
because if you have something like pyroluria and you're taking psychotropic medications for it, you're just putting a band-aid on the problem. And what will happen over time is that those symptoms that you wanted to be treated with these medications may subside and may actually seem like they're working. But over time, they'll lose their efficacy, not work, maybe even cause a lot of adverse effects and you'll get labeled treatment resistant. I've talked about this multiple times in many videos, but I mention it more specifically on the video on treatment resistant depression and why antidepressants don't work. So if you missed that video, check that one out as well. But I wanna emphasize here that if you're a person who's having mental health symptoms, start using your skills first your diet, your stress management, look at your sleep habits, how are you exercising, etc., to treat those mental health symptoms. Get into therapy as a first line treatment. Then start looking at your nutrition, your labs. I talk about basic labs for mental health. That'd be a great place to start. And if you are suspicious that you might have this disorder, go ahead and get the cryptopyral test. You can order it online. I'll make sure to put the link in the description. So have you ever heard of pyroluria or have been treated for cryptopyrals or pyroluria? Please let us know in the comment section below because we learn from sharing each other's experiences. And as always, I thank you all for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey and I look forward to seeing you all next week.